Washington Watch. I'm Tony Perkins, your host. The website, TonyPerkins.com. If you're on Gab, it's at Tony underscore Perkins. Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves has signed the first state bill in the U.S. this year to ban male athletes, transgendered male athletes, from competing on female sports teams. That's what the governor had to say earlier today. I am proud of the stand Mississippi is taking on this issue with the passage and ultimately the signing of the Mississippi Fairness Act. It sends a clear message to my daughters and all of Mississippi's daughters that their rights are worth fighting for. Mississippi Senate Bill 2536 is set to become law on July the 1st, but a legal challenge is still possible. President Biden has made it clear transgenderism is a key focus of his administration. And so it's good to see states all across the country pushing back uh, on this nonsense and simply saying, look, we got to protect our girls, girls sports, uh, protect young people from being preyed upon by those that are pushing this agenda. Here to talk about this newly passed bill is the author of the bill, Mississippi State Senator Angela Hill. Senator, welcome back to the program. Glad to be back, Tony. Congratulations. I'm sure you're happy today to see this signed into law. Absolutely. I was so happy for the governor to sign this bill into law and for me to be joined by so many colleagues uh, in the legislature standing there and applauding the governor for signing this bill. This is just a common sense bill. It is a shame that we even have to have a piece of legislation that says that biological males that identify as females cannot come in and take over women's sports. I, I never thought I would be here in the day that we had to have a, a statute to declare the differences between males and females in female sports. Now I have to say, Senator Hill, you made this look pretty easy uh, getting this bill through the legislature, but you did run into some opposition. Where, where was that from? Well, you know, unfortunately, sometimes people who, um, know that things are the right thing to do, sometimes still get cold feet and sometimes have to be nudged across the finish line. So, um, you know, I had to fight for this bill. Um, just don't take it for granted that if you're in a Republican control body that you're gonna get this legislation through because there's lots of interest out there pushing back. Um, but, you know, in the end, it came together. Everybody worked together. We got the bill passed and that's what truly matters. And now South Dakota's passed the bill um, Governor Noem says she's going to sign this bill. Other states are trying to get this legislation out. Um, and, and I'm just happy that Mississippi has gotten this behind us and that now we can focus on, you know, maybe helping colleagues in other states get this through their state legislatures. You know, that's a good point, Senator, that, you know, there, there's other things to do now to work on. But the, the issue is we have to deal with these issues because the left is pushing them on us. Like you said, this shouldn't be necessary that we have to protect girls sports. But in fact, it is because of the agenda they're pushing. I agree with you. And, and, you know, the right has to learn that the left fights and when they get in charge, they roll like a steamroller. And so we're going to have to be a unified front um, on the right. And we're going to have to push as hard as we can back because honestly, I think that they have, you know, tipped their pendulum too far and, and gone really too far with this because I think the polling in Mississippi is reflective of what most people think across the United States that, you know, biological males don't belong in female sports, whether they identify, no matter how they identify, that women's rights matter. We created women's sports for women to be able to compete against other women fairly. Um, and we have to protect that now. I mean, you know, just because somebody says it's so doesn't mean it's so that a biological male can turn into a female because they're always gonna be a biological male um, and have these inherent differences between male and female that give them an unfair advantage when it comes to strength, agility, stamina, all these things that we know the differences are between brothers and sisters, you know, men and women. Um, you know, we're here to declare that there are male and female. And, you know, if we have to put that down in a state statute, that's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, that's where we're at in this country. And we're just going to have to stand up and say women have rights. And you cannot say that you're a supporter of women with a straight face and believe that biological males should be able to come and take over female sports. Yeah, and I think it's very telling, Senator, that you, you see very few women wanting to do men's sports. 
Uh, it is yeah, the other true. way around because there is an advantage for biological yes. men to enter into women's sports. And if you look at some of these cases across the country, these people, these these males that decided that they wanted to come over and participate in female sports, they they couldn't do much on the male sports team. And, but once they started in coming over on the female team, then they started winning. So that's, you know, unfortunately, that's what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Senator, I appreciate you. And I know our listeners do uh, for standing up for common sense, because uh, we're living in a time when common sense, quite frankly, is uncommon. Yeah, well, it's more common than you think. The media wants you to think it's not common, but in Mississippi, 79% of the people polled supported this law. Uh, and I think that you'll find in most states that the, that the majority of people support protecting female sports. Yep, yeah, uh, you are right. Recent polling shows that to be the case, even among young people, uh, young people, very supportive of women. Thank you sports. so much. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate you being with us. Folks, we're going to have our conversation about HR1 with our good friend, Congressman Jody Heiss of Georgia, coming up next after the break. He's part of last night's Pray Vote Stand event. Very interesting conversation. Very, very dangerous piece of legislation. Now you need to listen to this and you need to take action. Don't go away. Coming back after this.